The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to start out the show with the cattle market because uh, we're not able to use the DAX today. It's a banking holiday across Europe, so we'll be starting out with the cattle. <clears throat> the reason why I'm going to be starting with the cattle is because of the fact that we're seeing something very interesting technically because as cattle have exploded to the upside these last several days, you'll notice that we've had a decrease in open interest. And what that means is, is that new buyers are not coming into the market. All of this move is called by short covering. So this is actually a very uh, dangerous level to be bullish uh, in cattle with that type of a thing. Now, how high it can go is anybody's guess. As you can see here, we've exceeded some pretty uh, incredible levels uh, going above the 1.618 level. But watch this. Over the next couple of days, we learn something from it because it's very important when open interest does not follow along with the markets because this has completed, you know, three major uh, ABCD patterns up here at the 124 level. So maybe we'll look at it a little bit uh, on tomorrow's show. Uh, by the way, I'll be doing the show for Basel at uh, 11 o'clock today, and I'm going to have uh, a guest on both days, the same guest. I'm going to have Kevin Murphy. Kevin is the, was the uh, gentleman who worked with Bill Ehrman from Ehrmanometry, and uh, he's really got some interesting things uh, to put together. He's written a white paper on you know what he's looking at, and he's got some nice charts. We'll take a look at those, and uh, we'll see what's, uh, what's going on. Okay, now moving on to some of these other things that have been happening. We had a, a monster day, of course, uh, in uh, Amazon. I will put this one up here to take a look at it today. You'll see here that uh, Amazon hit a big, uh, you know, 1.618 uh, expansion from the uh, November high. Uh, let's call that the October high. Uh, it also made a 1.618 expansion of the low between April the uh, 10th and also the high that we made on Friday. It stopped exactly at the exact number uh, in the uh, in Amazon, which is quite amazing. It was down 25 points. Uh, we're going to be up a little bit this morning. Uh, I don't know how high we're going to go in this, but this is a very, uh, very interesting chart. Now, that everybody's saying it's going to be who's going to be uh, coming to the finish line first. Is it going to be the $1,000 Google or the $1,000 Amazon? I think either one of them. Could easily make it probably. Uh, they're great. They're great companies. My gosh, I use Google Google every day, and I use Amazon, you know, several days a week. So uh, it, it's really amazing what they've done. It just shows you that once you, you know, you have a product that everybody wants, they're going to be the path to your door, and that is in fact what's happened. Pretty much like what's happened with Apple, and we have Apple earnings coming out on Tuesday, and I'm sure they're going to be a blockbuster. Also, so we'll keep a you know close eye on that. Oh, by the way, since we were talking about race to the finish line, remember we have the Kentucky Derby uh, coming up Saturday. I'll have the winner for you on Sunday morning. If you'll stay tuned to that show, uh, one of my best memories of going to the Kentucky Derby. Uh, my grandfather took me down there about four or five times. Terre Haute was only about two hours away uh, down to Louisville, and uh, but in 19. Uh, 1986, I, I was there with a couple of floor traders. I was living in California at the time, and um, one of the big trainers in California, Charlie Whittingham, had never been to the Kentucky Derby. He was a legend in uh, California, and he was taking his first horse to 
to the Kentucky Derby, and Willie Shoemaker, the famous jockey, was going to be riding him. And uh, I was a big fan of uh, Willie Shoemaker because I happened to, to know it, met him a few times. And so we all went down to uh, Kentucky to uh, play the races and stuff. And we got to the we got to the Kentucky Derby, and uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Whittingham's uh, horse, uh, Ferdinand, the number one horse, was 17 to one. And the horse that we also liked was another jockey, Chris McCarron. He was on the three horse, yeah, the three horse. And uh, the uh, so what we did was we 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 bet the horse to win, and we bet the exacta. Uh, where they had to finish exactly one two or two one, and uh, we they both came in the same way. It was a monster exacta for a two dollar bet. You got back um, three hundred and fifty five dollars, uh, seventy one hundred, I believe, was the because we 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 put a fifty dollar exacta on it. So it was a fabulous day and uh, one of my best memories uh, of Kentucky. But uh, that's not the most I've ever won at the races, folks. Uh, in nineteen. Um, I was a 90. In 1987, my friend Eddie Horwitz, uh, we were at uh, at Hollywood Park at the time, and we played a pick six ticket. We put $186 up for a pick six ticket, and we won $26,000 uh, on that one, which was a good one. And then a few years later, we had almost the same thing going on. Those are the only times they've ever won. So you don't want to listen to who I, I select, because the times that I hit a long shot are very, very rare. I don't play very often. I you know use the Breeders' Cup and in the the uh, triple crown races but that's it let's get on to the other stuff to uh to look at by the way if you ever go to the races and you want to and have some fun watch the betting board you know the tote board out there because that's going to tell you which horses are live you know see where the money's flowing into the horses and those are the ones that you know the professionals are betting and they they have a pretty good record of doing this you know the usual people they always bet on the long shot but watch the watch the betting action that's a good way to to do it okay let's move on to something something important let's uh let's talk a little bit here about this uh dow about this nasdaq composite i wanted to show you this pattern here because it's a very 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 rare pattern but it may be uh it may be a good pattern we will we'll just have to wait and see this is the first day of the month of course and uh, that's when you know money starts to come in the, the most positive days of the month are the last two days of the month and the first day of the month those are the three most positive days so we should have started up today which we will but if you'll notice this pattern here the nasdaq composite you'll see that we had three peaks between march and april and this leads to the domed house, three peaks in the domed house, and that was one of the patterns that uh, George Lindsay was very famous for. And Mr. Lindsay was on the Louis Rukeyser show quite a bit. Now, with this particular one, you can see the expansion from March to May was exactly uh, 2.618, and we closed near the lower end of the range. Now, I noticed that the, the NQs, have uh, you know the, the the smaller ones the, the the Nasdaq 100 has made a higher high by a little bit uh, this morning and whether it's going to continue on you know we'll wait and see but this composite most probably will not be making a new high because it's all of the issues on the New York uh, on the uh, Nasdaq so it's a pretty wild one going on and we're going to take a look here at Google. Uh, before we get to the break, because it left a big shooting star pattern that is, uh, you know, one of the things that Steve Rhodes looks at. And uh, we're trading at around 9.07 this morning, so it's in this same uh, ballpark here. Uh, but that's all you have going for it is a shooting star pattern. I mean, there's nothing else here. It's, these these uh, Amazon and Google have left some of the larger gaps uh, that we've ever had, and the NASDAQ has left the largest gap that it's ever had. 877. 927-6648. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed Taz Pro 
proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks. We're going to take a look here at the gold market. Uh, I'm using a 15-minute chart here because that gives you the last 10 days. Uh, as you can see, the retracement that we made uh, Sunday night went exactly to the 382 retracement of the high on April 21st. It also made a perfect 61% retracement of the high on April the 24th. And what this does, folks, uh, if we break below 1262, it's going to set up two major swings down here. The first one comes in at 1258, and the next one comes in at 1248. So watch those very closely. Now, if we get above, you know, the 1273 level, that will change the whole game plan here. But right now, gold is heading lower. Uh, as near as we can tell, that should get us down to those levels that we're looking at, 1258, uh, excuse me, 1258 first and then 1248. Uh, but I still believe we've got a chance uh, for the better target that we're looking for, uh, and that would be the uh, target of uh, $1,200. Uh, that would be down, you know, $70, which is uh, two harmonic numbers uh, in the gold. So that would be an interesting one to look at. Now, silver has been acting weaker, as has platinum. And we'll put this up so that you can take a quick look at it because uh, silver is, is even weaker today. It's broken below these two numbers. Uh, last night, it broke below the 78% re retracement. And it also broke below the 50% retracement that we, that we had back into this area. The only thing that remains here is that 1,700 level. Uh, that would equal the, the move down that we had between February and March, and this would be equal uh, down there at around the $17 uh, per ounce level in silver. But, you know, the fact that silver is not able to bounce, and you can see how strong gold has been, you know, compared to the silver, it's, uh, and, you know, this could change very quickly, of course, but this is what's been happening, is the weakness in platinum, which has been incredibly weak, 
and uh, silver has not helped the gold market at all. Um, well, we're going to find out, you know, what this gold market's got uh, to it here in the next uh, week or so, I believe. We're down uh, well over two weeks now since that last high was made, and we want to keep a very, very close eye on it because I still think we've got a chance to be bullish on gold. Uh, but believe me, uh, it's acting uh, like it wants to go lower at least uh, early this morning in here. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if that's going to uh, if that is if that's going to be the case because it's it's a very um, a very very nice pattern on the long term. A gold chart that makes us, you know, keep wanting to watch it. Now, I've been asked to take a quick look here uh, at the Dow Jones transports. Uh, we don't look at this too often because uh, it's pretty hard to trade. But if you'll notice here that we've had a uh, butterfly top that was made up here on um, March the uh, 1st. That was right after the uh, the speech on the 28th of February, and as you can see, that was a 1.27 expansion, uh, and from from that level, you know, we dropped, uh, you know, well over uh, eight percent just very very quickly, and now we've, uh, as of last uh, Tuesday, uh, we had made a perfect Gartley pattern at the 61 percent retracement, and the ABCD structure on this happened to be uh, absolutely perfect, so. This tells us that, uh, you know, the transportations, you know, could be, you know, heading to the downside. Now, someone has asked me a question. Um, one of the people that listen to or that are subscribers to the Fibonacci 24-7 service, I put this chart out, and they ask, was that a head and shoulders pattern in the Dow Jones transportations? And if you measure the time between the shoulder and the head and the head and the shoulder, it's a little shorter than normal. But... The pattern is there because the right shoulder is so much lower than the left shoulder, which is one of the more bearish of the head and shoulders patterns because the market is unable to rally to levels it was able to do when it was in a bullish mood. So this is a head and shoulders pattern in the Dow Jones transportation and says that it should be heading down. However, uh, if we move up more than 250 points from where we are here in the transportations, this whole pattern will change and it'll become a lot more bullish. But as we come in today, that's what we're looking at, that this is a, a head and shoulders pattern in the transportations. And it most probably would be uh, moving, you know, to the downside is what I would be what I would be guessing. OK, now I wanted to cover one other. And that was one that we were talking about last week because it was uh, finishing up a really nice pattern. And that was the Australian dollar. And if you remember, we were uh, talking about this because it was making a, a really nice uh, butterfly pattern down here. Uh, at the 50% level. We've already rallied 100 pips off the bottom, folks. We got up to 75.40 today. Uh, that's uh, the last time we rallied. We rallied 150 pips. So there should be some pretty strong resistance coming in in the Australian dollar at the 75.60 level because it's still in a very strong downtrend. But as you can see, it's had a pretty good rally, and that's what we were talking about. This is all related to what's happening with the U.S. dollar, folks. Uh, I was listening, you know, to um, uh, uh, John John Logan talk about the U.S. dollar and where it was. I mean, it certainly has all of those characteristics, you know, that you look for where it could be nearing a, uh, a pretty interesting bottom here, just a little bit lower. We'll put this up here so that you can see here with the uh, – U.S. dollar, and you'll notice here that we are looking at a, a market that should be coming down to the uh, right at just below the 98 level, and we're right around 98 and change, I think, this morning, because we've had good movement in the Canadian dollar, we've had good movement in the Australian dollar, a little bit in the euro, uh, and just a tiny bit in the yen, but. Uh, this with this index, the way it's structured, you know, any of those can help the market move. And when they come into a basket of four or five of them, you know, that ups, ad, adds up to about 30 or 40 percent of the index. And that's what gets this thing to move quite a bit. What's interesting about this U.S. dollar index chart, folks, is if you look at the relationship between the blue line, which is the S&P 500 and what the dollar index is doing. If you'll notice the time from April the 5th that we've diverged, you know, the dollar index has been going straight down and the U.S. dollar has been going straight up. That's a divergence that you don't see very often. Uh, you'll see it occasionally, but uh, that's a, that's a two-week period now. Uh, well, it's almost a month where it's been, been acting, you know, totally different 
uh, than the rest of the uh, the rest of the indices. So this is what we're watching. I I really believe you have to be a buyer. Uh, this would be equivalent to the euro hitting 110 if we can get this uh, right around the uh, 97.75 level in the dollar index. It would really be a really nice pattern. At that point, if you'll look at this chart closely, you'll see that you'd have a really nice three drive to a bottom pattern. You'd have two perfect A, B, C, D patterns coming in, and they would be setting exactly at the 78% re retracement from election night, and it would be a 38% retracement from the low that we made early in 2016. So put this dollar index on your, uh, on your watch list because it's got a lot of things uh, to tell you that uh, it's very, very close to something really significant happening. So... Watch it very, very closely, folks. I'm, I think it's going to be interesting. Pretty soon we're going to have the commercial come up, and then when we come back, we're going to have Kevin Murphy as our guest, and he's going to be talking to us about some of the work that he's been doing, and uh, which was the work that Bill Ehrman for Ehrmanometry worked on uh, all those years. It's very, very exciting stuff, and believe me, it's, uh, it's very, very interesting. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and we've got Kevin Murphy on the line from Nashville, Tennessee. Kevin, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Good morning, Larry. Good morning to you. I posted your chart number one in, and what I'm going to do is turn over the mic to you, and you just go ahead, and when you need me to move to chart number two, uh, I'll be happy to do it, so fire away. By the way, I, let me should mention that, Kev, Kevin, tell them a little bit about how you knew uh, Bill Ehrman, you know, because, uh, you know, a lot of people never got to, you know, talk to him or meet him, but you, you live there in Nashville, so you saw him quite a, occasionally at least, right? Well, I, I've had the past couple of years. Yeah, I saw him uh, for the past couple of years here before he passed away last year. I actually lived uh -huh. in Georgia or Atlanta uh, before that and knew him since really 1998. So knew him about wow. almost almost 20 years. And then the past, I guess, 14 years before he passed away, we pretty much communicated on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So Okay, go, go so ahead. We've got... Sure, go ahead. Sure. Um, no, it's your show. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the, um, the the purpose of this, and by the way, I'm putting out a report on this or a paper, which you have, which you can send to people or they can email me and I can send. So these charts and what's going on in these charts are going to are covered in the, uh, in, in the paper. And the premise of this is that I'm looking for a final market high from the lows of 2009 this week, the fir first week of May. And what you see in this chart is, and this is just to give a little background. This is the history of the Dow Jones Industrial Average going back to 1929 to the present. Uh, it basically shows all the major market highs and lows uh, since 1929, uh, just the major ones. And as you can see um, from this picture, there are about 25 of them. And uh, this type of work basically deals with the mathematical and geometric relationships uh, between market highs and lows, and the more you have, the better. So, uh, for example, going to the year maybe 2000, you had about 20 points, and cross-referencing 20 points is basically taking 20 times 20, so you have roughly 400 points of data uh, to cross-reference and deal with to try to figure out what's going on. But as you increase the number of years, say from 2000 to 2009, you had five additional points, and that makes 25. 25 times 25 is, is 625, which is basically 50% more than what you had at the year 2000. So the point is, the more data you have, the better. And part of the problem I was having is that there wasn't enough market data um, to really figure out what was going on. So I ended up going back into the late 1800s to figure out some more pieces of this uh, large jigsaw puzzle. So that's basically the purpose of this first chart, just to show some history of where this data comes from and the, and the fact that most of these um, market highs and lows are interrelated with each other. Okay? So that's the okay. only purpose of that first chart. Okay. Going to chart two. Okay. I'll put this up. Going there you go. Going to two, what we see here is the interrelationships of some of these moves. Now, in the upper left corner of the chart, you see a geometric template. This is something Bill Ehrman used. This one is called a static template or a golden mean template. It basically is a representation of the internal mass relationships of a logarithmic spiral. Without getting into too much detail, it's basically just showing you what the lengths of different segments of a spiral are. And when you look at the chart, you notice that are, there are a couple of similar moves, and this one in particular is the 3,093 trading day move, one from the low of 62 to 1974 in the S&P and the other from the 1987 low to the 2000 high in the Dow. And what you see in the markets are a lot of moves that are replicated throughout history. Um, they're connected with each other typically, and Bill used to call these families of moves um, that show that the market relationships are interrelated and connected with each other. Um, for example, just taking the basic golden mean ratio on 1.618, this 3,093 Trading day moved, if multiplied by 1.618, is 5,005. And if you look at the chart, you can see uh, 3,093 trading days from the 87 low to the 2,000 high, and there's 5,005 from the uh, March 1980 low also to the 2,000 high. Okay? Yeah. So That's what the template sh shows is basically the mathematical inter interrelationships of these moves. Go ahead. <coughs> 
I was just saying, you use trading days, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, okay. Bill used trading days. I use trading days as well. Um, he used them going back as far as 1907. Uh, these charts represent trading days. It can be done both with calendar days and trading days. I did a lot of calendar day work on my own. In fact, the calendar day work I did went back into the 1800s, and I was able to interpolate the trading day data going back to then. So I was able to add the trading day count back well into the 1800s. So that's part of what I've done over the past few months is that I expanded the database of trading day data going back uh, at least 160 years. So, okay, and you, you've written a white paper, too, that you've included with these charts so that if the folks uh, want to see this, they can contact you, correct? Could you give them your, let's just give this several times this morning, but give them your email address, Kevin, so they can reach you. Sure. Uh, email address is kwmurphy, M-U-R-P-H-Y. So King Water, K-W-M-U-R-P-H-Y, at bellsouth.net. Great. Okay. You bet. Do you so want to go on to the here we've got this chart. Go, go ahead. Do you have another question? I was just going to say, are we going to move to chart three or are we still on chart two? We're still on chart two. One other, one okay, other, two other comments, and then we're going to move to the other charts, which, which may go a little quicker if we have the time constraint. No, no, take your time. Just don't rush. This is good stuff. Okay. The... You can see on the template that when you put these distances of, say, 3,093 and 5,005 on different segments of the template, you come up with different time frames, such as the template shows here that uh, the segment EC has a period of 8,548 trading days. Um, you knew the 3,093 3, trading day moves at the year 2000, and then after that you saw the 8,548 trading day move, which projected the 2002 market lows from the uh, 1968 S&P high. So the point is all these, all these moves are related, and they help to project future points in time. Uh, the last point on this chart is that this final distance, uh, 13,832, is also projected from the, the initial low here in 1962, and it projects to tomorrow, May 2nd, 2017. So the point is that all these moves are connected, and this template shows that the, all these distances relate to tomorrow, or tomorrow relates to these previous distances in history. Okay, mm -hmm. that's the basic point of this template. Okay, well that's uh, well that that puts the uh, what they say the meat on the table, as they say. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how this unfolds. But I I remember talking to Bill almost every day for a couple of years. Well, at least four days a week, and uh, you know he certainly had some great calls uh, through this level. What I what I noticed the most uh, important thing about him is that when it would go beyond a number by just one day, he would immediately uh, change his uh, uh, to be go from bearish to bullish. He wouldn't even wouldn't even think twice. But we'll take a break here, Kevin. We'll be right back. Okay. Yep. Kevin Murphy talking about ermanometry. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour, following the Tom O'Brien Show. Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with host Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Kevin Murphy about ermonometry. Uh, Kevin, are we ready to go to chart three? Yes, yes, we are. Okay, and I wanted to double check. That is K W Murphy at BellSouth.net. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. Okay, there we go. So, we got chart numbers. Good. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, too, is is I'm looking for the highs to occur this week, and one of the things we needed to see was a new high in at least one of the NASDAQ indices, and I'm happy to see we got that this morning. Mm -hmm. So um, we got confirmation of a high here in the NASDAQ or new highs, which tends to corroborate what I'm showing you. This chart here on chart three, or this page here on chart three, is pretty busy. There's a lot of stuff going on here, so I just want to make a couple of points. Um, from this chart, there are uh, a couple of moves here that are of importance. In the upper part of the chart, there's the 8230-day-9 8, move and the 9211-day move, and those are represented by the um, triangles in the upper left part of the chart. The point is those distances are from what's called, something called the 1967 balance point to the highs of 2000 and 2007. Those highs are represented by these distances and by the triangles in the upper left part of the chart. Uh, the point of this is that if you take the distance, of, <coughs> say, 90 to, to 11 and multiply by the Fibonacci ratio 1.3618, which is at the very top of the chart, you also reach May 2nd, which is, to, which is tomorrow. Okay? So what this basically okay. says is that the highs of 2,000, 2007 are tomorrow, and tomorrow are mathematically connected to each other. Okay. okay. That's, that's the main point of this chart. The other point is on the lower right-hand chart or in the middle of it are the, uh, are the connections to pi, which is a very important uh, timing component in the market. Uh, you can see that the low in 87, 1987 to the 2000 S&P high was 31, is 3,141 trading days, and that's how pi is represented in market moves. Also, the distance from the 1967 balance point to the 87 high was pi times 1.618. So uh, the import, that's, that's one thing I want to show here because pi is intimately connected to the markets. And if you look at the 67 balance point to tomorrow, that's a total of 12,564 days, which is 
3141 times 4, or pi times 4. So there's a connection with all these moves as it relates to pi and the golden mean triangle to tomorrow. Wow. But that's a lot very... to say in one, uh, in one bite, but uh, that's what this chart shows. And it's a busy chart, I understand. Well, it's not that busy. I mean, you show the exact highs and lows of some of these things, and uh, you know that's important. And folks, if you do want a copy of this, uh, all you have to do is to email Kevin at kwmurphy at bellsouth.net, or if you can't get through to him, you can, um, you know, email me and I'll forward it on to you. But Kevin certainly, certainly has uh, this good information. This brings back so many memories looking at these charts with these geometric figures. That and this is you know stuff that I worked with with uh, well Bryce Gilmore did all the work but uh, he did the same type of approach but not nearly uh, with the longer term view that uh, you have worked on. So do you want to go on to uh, uh, chart number four now? Yeah, let's go to chart four and spend a very short amount of time in this, and then we'll go to ch chart five, which okay. forecasts what should happen in the future, which is which I know is what people are interested in. Okay. Um, Chart four uh, basically shows a family of, of these moves that are related, and the main distance here in this chart is the distance of 3,590 market days, and that's represented in the template in the upper left corner. If you just take the number 3,590 and you multiply it by the square root of two, which is 1.4142, you get the period of 5,077 trading days. And if you look at the market from 1962 to 82, you can see that the distance from the 62 low to the uh, 1976 high in the S&P and Dow, 3,590 trading days, when multiplied by the square root of two is 5,077, which takes you from the 62 low to the 82 low. Mm -hmm. So those numbers were, or those distances were related by the square root of two. And what this chart shows you is that there are other periods throughout history, if you look at the right side of the chart of the past 15 years, you can see that there are other time periods that have also been or shown distances of 3,590 trading days. And these points are all connected. And uh, the point, <clears throat> the last point of this chart is that from the lows of 2002 and three, uh, there is a 3,500 uh, 90 day trading period that comes in tomorrow as well. So mm -hmm. that's the whole point of this chart. It's complicated. There's a lot of data, but 3,590 is a key, what I call, or Bill called the controller move. And that period relates from the lows of uh, 2002 when the internet bubble crashed to this current week. Okay. Wow. That's, that's, the, whole uh... point, that's the whole point of this chart. Well, this next one's going to knock the socks off somebody because it's making one heck of a prediction here. I've got chart number five up here, so fire away. We've got a couple more minutes here. Okay. Well, this, this is important because it basically forecasts what should happen from this first week in May until, until January 2008, uh, 2018, which is, next, which is nine months away. On mm -hmm. uh, this point, which I've spoken to you about before, is a historically very, very important point. It goes all the way back into the 1800s. Um, this chart shows in the template in the upper left-hand corner that it is connected to the low of the Great Depression, the 1932 low, uh, to the low of the 1970s and 80s, which is um, shown on the chart. That distance is 11,651 11, days, and from that point to... January of next year is 9,912 days, and this chart shows the mathematical relationships. That point, however, is not going to be the low. What I am looking for is a, it's called a balance point. What I'm looking for is a low this fall, and then another retest next spring about a year from now. And what this suggests is it's a climb somewhere in the 30 to 50 percent area in the markets um, for several months, a rebound, and then a retest about a year from now and then the uh, initiation of a new new bull market. Wow. The point here is that the balance point, or the point that is equidistant between the two lows is focused on January 12th. So that means basically you're looking at uh, a period of about a year where you go down and make kind of a W bottom. You go down, rebound, retest the lows, and then start a new bull market. But the next year should see a significant pullback related to geopolitical reasons or whatever. Um, 
that should call the, cause us. And this work is saying it's going to begin this week. Well, boy, that's certainly putting meat on the table. That's no question about that. Uh, well, we're winding it up here, so I just want to remind the folks, if you'd like to see these five charts in the white paper that uh, Kevin wrote, you can reach him at KWM Murphy or KW Murphy at bellsouth.net, and I'm sure he'll forward it on to you. And, Kevin, what I'd like to do is maybe out into the future a few weeks, maybe a month from now, we'll have you back on and review what's happened uh, since this time. How's that? That sounds good. Thanks for joining me, my friend. And we'll see you again at uh, 1030, uh, excuse me, 1130, where you're going to be uh, my guest again. Okay, Kevin Murphy Thank you. of Nashville, Tennessee, 877-927-6648. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we want to talk a little bit about the grain markets this morning because we've had so much wet weather coming through the Midwest that it's affecting planting for corn and that also affecting wheat and beans. So we're having a very strong move. We're up about 20 cents uh, in soybeans so far this morning and wheat's moving and corn's moving uh, pretty much as we expected. Now, the, another market that is going to be really interesting to watch here along with this gold market that has so far held the um, – uh, whoa, I don't understand what that private message is, Jay. Uh, we have a, oh, a caller from uh, Boston. Jay, are you there? Yeah. He, yeah oh, there you go. I see it. How are you? 
Pretty good. That was a great presentation uh, that we got from uh, Kevin, I thought. Very, yeah. compe- very compelling. Very, very smart boy. Yeah, very compelling stuff. My question to you is this. Do you think there's any refuge? I mean, this uh, day we have coming up tomorrow would be the start of something pretty momentous and that would, you know, has parallels going back to some really big bad days in market history. So do you think there's any refuge or precious metals help you, or is this going to be a sinking tide sinks all boats here? I have no idea, Kevin. I look at one chart at a time, my friend. My lessons of the, over the years have told me when I try to look at interrelationships of markets, uh, they figure out a way to trick me. So if I just look at the patterns of what I'm looking at, you know, that's uh, really what I'm looking at. What I would do is, is if this May 1st, May 2nd high is here, this is just wait till the end of the week. And if it's a bad week, then it's most probably he's spot on. And it would be something really, really big. We're up against some major patterns up here, as we know. You know, we've made a double top in the S&P uh, in the cash. Uh, you know, the um, IWM made a perfect three drive to a top pattern. And we've had this big expansion in the NASDAQ. And that's mainly because of, you know, those, uh, those uh, what do they call those? Not, not uh, what do they got a name for those? Uh, <laughs> I can't remember those. Apple, Google, and um Oh, uh, Netflix. Yeah. I can't remember what it is, but all those are the ones that are making it. When you've got two stocks that are $900, you know, they're price weighted or cap weighted. I mean, that's what makes this thing go crazy. Fang stocks. That's correct. Hey, Jay, thanks for calling in, my friend. All righty. Thanks, though. You bet, buddy. Bye bye. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.